We have officially reached the halfway point of the 2023 NBA season, and I, like many YouTubers, wanted to create a mid-season award frontrunners video. Today I will be discussing the nominees for each of the NBA Player Awards, as well as listing off my all-star roster predictions. Before we get started, please, if you like basketball-related content, consider subscribing and like this video, as it helps me out way more than I think you guys realize. Now, let us get started. The first award I wanted to talk about was the Rookie of the Year. It seems like every season, the draft class gets more and more hyped up, and 2022 was no exception. Already, several young players are living up to and beyond expectations. So picking a winner is pretty difficult, but here's my top three. Currently third in the running, I would say, is Benedict Matherin of the Indiana Pacers. After a scorching hot start to the season for himself and the team, Matherin has started to dip off considerably in his shooting efficiencies, which combined with the absence of Tyrese Halliburton has been a huge hit to the team. Still though, the sixth overall pick is the third best player in his draft class, which I would consider a major success. Second place in the Rookie of the Year award race, I have Keegan Murray of the Sacramento Kings. One of the toughest things a rookie can do is earn meaningful minutes for a playoff caliber team right away, and that is exactly what he has done here. As of me preparing this video, the Kings sit seven games over 500, if you can believe that, and third overall in the West. Murray is their starting small forward thanks to his elite shooting efficiency, which currently sits at 42% on six threes a night. That is unheard of for rookies. His all-around game still has a ways to go, but he definitely has the foundation of a good starting player in this league. And finally, at first, the leader for the Rookie of the Year award race has to be Paolo Benchero. Right off the bat, Benchero has proven he is a step above every other rookie in his class as he is already his team's best player. A team which, mind you, features several lottery pick players a couple or more years into their careers. Benchero's scoring ability is excellent, he rebounds well, he moves the ball well, and he holds his own defensively. Last year, the Magic won 22 games, and this year, we're halfway through the season, they've already got 19. They are actually a contender to make the play-in, thanks in large part to Benchero. For the next award, we have the Defensive Player of the Year, which is a very close call, as you could give this to like five different guys right now, and I'd believe you. But for me, narrowing it down to three, currently in third, I have the former second round pick, DeAnthony Melton. A quiet addition to the Philadelphia 76ers this past season, but an important one is Melton's is a defensive hound around the perimeter. His high IQ, long arms, and quick agility make him a force to be reckoned with. His 1.9 steals a game is second in the league, and he fouls significantly less than the only guy beating him in that category. He has been a crucial piece to the Sixers as they chase the top of the standings in the East. Currently in second place for the DPOY, I have OG Ananobi. I know the Raptors have not been as good as many people had expected or at least hoped for, but this is certainly not the fault of Ananobi. His defensive versatility has been instrumental to them keeping it so close. Currently, his 2.1 steals a game lead the entire NBA, but his advanced stats are not that impressive. I have Ananobi here largely based off of the eye test. If he were in a better situation, he very well could be the front runner for this award, but for now, at number two, that's pretty impressive. And my pick for the Defensive Player of the Year midway through the season is Jaron Jackson Jr. Though injuries are keeping him just shy of technically qualifying, his 3.2 blocks per game leads the NBA by 0.5, which is a huge margin. His fouling, which has historically been a major problem for him, is also down to a career low. His defensive rating is the absolute lowest of anyone to play at least 400 minutes, and the Grizzlies are right now battling for the first seed in the West. Triple J is really close to becoming by far the league's best defensive player, and it has been a monumental impact to his team's success. For the next award, we have the Sixth Man of the Year, which normally I am not a fan of. It is essentially the who is the best player who for some stupid reason doesn't start games award, but I assign a little more ruling to it. Not only do you have to be overwhelmingly a non-starter, but you also cannot average more than 26 minutes a game. So with that in mind, 
In third, I'm giving it to Damian Lee of the Phoenix Suns. Lee has become the Suns' saving grace off the bench, who has saved many games for them thanks to the amount of injuries they've had this year. This season, his ability to perform under pressure has been instrumental to their success, and his league-leading 48% three-point shot is stunning. Without Lee, I think the Suns would be much worse off. Currently in second for the Sixth Man of the Year award, I have Colin Sexton, one of the league's most underappreciated young guards. Sexton's name was drugged through the mud last season and this past offseason due to him being out with an injury and his former team having a lot of success, but he has made a triumphant return to basketball with the Utah Jazz. Playing a career low in minutes, Sexton is averaging 14 and 2 a night, shooting a career high 41% from deep and 50% from the field. Thanks in large part to his quiet contributions, the Jazz are playing like a legitimate playoff team. And in first, as of right now, I am giving the Sixth Man of the Year award to Malcolm Brogdon. Playing with the league's best team, the Boston Celtics, Brogdon is having arguably his best season yet. The former Rookie of the Year is putting up 14 a night off the bench while shooting a career high 45% from deep, which is the fourth highest rate in the league. He is also playmaking well at three assists per game, which is the third highest on his team. He was clearly the best move the Celtics made this past offseason, and he very well may end up be what pushes them to the top. Moving on, let's discuss the Most Improved Player Award. Some people like to artificially ban certain guys from consideration. For example, I've heard people say that lottery picks shouldn't be considered because they are expected to improve. I've also heard second-year players shouldn't be considered because, again, they are expected to improve. But I mean everyone in the league is expected to improve year to year, so I don't think that's pretty fair. I'm just looking at who has improved the most from last year to this year. Currently in third, I have Bull Bull. After a very perplexing first three years in the league where he was essentially one foot out the door, although we do know now he was dealing with a uh, nagging injury, Bull has finally gotten his body healthy and is making the most of his opportunity with the young Orlando Magic. Bull went from only two points per game in year three to now 11 a night while shooting a career high from the field and his 1.5 blocks per game rank him second in the league of guys playing under 25 minutes a game. He is a mystery man when it comes to predicting his future, but for now Bull is finally living up to the lofty expectations he carried in high school. In second, I have Alperin Shengun of the Houston Rockets. Shengun was not supposed to be the best player on this rebuilding Rockets team, but that is exactly what has become. The mini Nikola Jokic has been dazzling this season thanks to his remarkably high IQ and court vision, which has helped him immensely because he is an undersized, not very athletic center, but he's still putting up 15 points, 9 boards, and 3 assists a night. And I bet he will continue to rise on this ladder, because after the calendar has turned to 2023, he's averaging 19, 10, and 7. Experience is making him better every single day, so this award very well might fall into his hands. But for now, midway through the year, sitting atop of the rest for this award has to be Lowry Markkanen. Five years into his NBA career, Markkanen was already forgotten. He was essentially just a tall floor spacer, a la Frank Kaminsky. But with the Utah Jazz in year six, something finally changed. He went from being a tall catch and shoot guy to the guy, just like he is with the Finnish national team every summer. Markkanen is putting up 24 and eight a game for the Jazz while shooting a spectacular 43% from deep on seven attempts per game. And his 59% shooting on his twos is the third highest of anyone scoring at least 20 a night. He along with Sexton have rejuvenated the Jazz's organization and are forcing them to question whether or not tanking is the direction they should be heading. And finally, we're going to get to that award everyone really loves, the MVP. Easily the most important and highly debated award handed out each season. So let's just dive right in. Currently in third, I have Jason Tatum of the Boston Celtics. The best player on the best team in the standings is a very good argument for the MVP. Tatum is doing more offensively this season for the Celtics than he has ever done before. His 32 points a night rank him third in the league, but it is more than just scoring a lot that makes him an MVP candidate. Tatum controls the ball on offense. He creates looks over everyone from anywhere on the court. 
and now he is creating for others at a career high rate while still managing to maintain his above average defensive impact on the other end of the floor. Tatum has been phenomenal this season, but playing significantly better is the second place in the MVP race, Luka Doncic. He basically won up Tatum in every conceivable way, minus the wins and losses. Doncic is the future face of not just the NBA, but basketball worldwide, as at only 23 years of age, he already is a EuroLeague MVP, he is a EuroBasket champion, and he is an Olympic first team award winner. Now he's just chasing that MVP in the NBA. Right now he leads the league with 33 points a night to go along with 9 rebounds, 8 assists, and 1.5 steals a game, all higher than Tatum by a significant margin. His Dallas Mavericks currently sit 6th in the West, which may not impress you, but considering the next best teammate is Christian Wood, whereas Tatum has the perennial all-star Jalen Brown right next to him, it helps paint the picture of just how impressive Luka has been. He very well may win the MVP award this year, but at least as of right now, there's another big gap separating two from one. The MVP of the NBA right now is Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets, arguably the most dominant player in all of the NBA, you could say, ever. Jokic is not only emulating last season where he broke the all-time record in player efficiency rating, but he is actually playing even better. His 25 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists a night is a triple-double average. That is an accomplishment that if he were to maintain it for an entire season, would make him only the third player ever to achieve it, and he would be the first ever center to do so. But even more than counting stats, Jokic is shooting the ball at a remarkable rate. 37% from deep is higher than both Tatum and Luka, and 67% on his twos is the highest of anyone in the league shooting at least eight a game. And if you want more advanced stats than just the PER, how about the box plus minus of 13.2, which is more than three points higher than second best in the league, Luka Doncic. The Nuggets currently sit only a single game behind the Celtics for the best record in the NBA. Jokic is without a doubt the MVP, and anyone who tells you otherwise is simply admitting voter fatigue, and as a result, they do not deserve the right to have a vote. So there you have it, my picks for each of the NBA awards that actually matter. Now, here is my list of the All-Star team members, which we'll be able to compare to the actual list, which is coming out very soon. In the East, the starters have to be Donovan Mitchell, James Harden, Jason Tatum, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Joel Embiid. Off the bench out East, I have Kyrie Irving, Jalen Brown, Tyrese Halliburton, Kevin Durant, Pascal Siakam, Kyle Kuzma, Julius Randle, and Kristaps Porzingis. Then in the West, the starters are Luka Doncic, Stephen Curry, LeBron James, DeMontes Sabonis, and Nikola Jokic. Off the bench, I have Shea Gilgis Alexander, Damian Lillard, Ja Morant, Desmond Bain, Paul George, Zion Williamson, Devin Booker, and Lowry Markkinen. Go ahead and throw a fit down in the comments. I wait. I know some people will not like the fact I have two wizards making it, but if you just actually sit down and think about it, Kuzma and Porzingis are having pretty much identical seasons, and they're both all-star caliber players. There isn't anyone who deserves to be in it more than them. You might want to argue Trey Young, but I just really don't like how poorly Trey Young is shooting this season. Another guy you might want to try to argue for in the East would be like Jalen Brunson, but he's just not really that good. He gets a lot of opportunity, and his team's all right, but Tyrese Halliburton is better. I think Kuzma's better. I think Harden's better. I think Kyrie's earned it. So it, it, I just can't put those guys in over them. And in the West, there is a pretty big drop-off as the forwards go on. Like Zion, Paul George, and Markkinen, that's not the most impressive last three but I think they deserve it. And Devin Booker, by the way, he's not really being talked about because he's gone down with an injury. But before the injury, Devin Booker was the player of the month for the first month of the NBA season. And he's right up there at the top of the scoring list and he shoots the ball very well. And when he plays, the Phoenix Suns are the best team in the Western Conference and they've made it to the finals one year, the second round one year. So I think Booker's a pretty proven product. So thank you all for watching. 
please comment, subscribe, like the video if you have not already. I will see you all next time.